Hey there. Okay. Yeah, like, I got really nice introduced. I'm Matt. Uh, I'm from Bakra, but that doesn't matter here. Uh, I'm here for WordPress. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hack WordPress. So a WordPress website. So who's going to... Somebody here is going to get hacked. Uh, and I already know who, so because I ask around, so uh, not too surprising. But first of all, um, let's talk a little bit about why it's important to get hacked. Or first of all, let's talk about what not to expect from this talk. So heavily paraphrased, success is 10% inspiration and 90% preparation. Like I said, heavily paraphrased from Thomas Edison. But actually, I say this talk is 10% preparation and 90% improvisation. What does that mean? I don't know shit about what's going to happen, to be honest. Because I don't know the target that I'm going to attack, and I don't know the outcome, and I don't know the security issues that this target might have. So everything you see here is going to be done live, and going to be done in comparison to other stuff that I did before, and of course, in together with you. If you have any questions, let's wait on and keep them until the end. So this is kind of an agenda, intro and what to expect. We already did, yay. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about why it's important to hack yourself. Then we're going to hack some stuff. And if we find stuff and if we still have time, we're going to hack some more stuff. Sounds like a good plan to everyone? OK, cool. Uh, and of course, we got FAQ, but yeah. Who cares? <laughs> so first of all, why do you want to hack yourself? Why do you even care? First of all, to get more secure. Wow. What does it even mean getting more secure? Let me tell you a little bit, a small story. Um, raise your hands. Who here has locked their, themselves out of their front door at one time in their life? Yeah, right? It sucks. So um, I, of course, at one, one time, I, of course, locked myself out, too. What's happening here? OK. My new keyboard is acting up. But um, just an FYI, this is not my actual door. So, but I locked myself out uh, when I first moved into my new home. And I panicked because I'm like, OK, it's raining because I'm from Germany. It's always raining in Germany. So, uh, so I locked myself out. And I need to get back in because I'm cold, I'm freezing, I'm young, and I'm unprepared. Great. So I started basically to um, get into everything that I could and get somehow find a way to get in. And believe it or not, I did. I did it without a locksmith. I was able to jam a window open, get into my house, and open the door. So I was really, really excited and really, really happy about that. Right? So as you can see here, really happy. Yay, doors open. But then I started to wonder, if I can get in that so easily, who else? Right? Because, OK, this was pretty easy. I just jammed the, uh, a window open, got in, and all my stuff is there. I was sleeping there. Other people may be sleeping there. Ah, that's not really great. So I started to think about how I can secure everything, how I can make my door more sturdy, for example, how I can secure the way that my window opens and stuff like that. That is basically the comparison to why you should hack yourself. Because if you know that there are vulnerabilities at some point, you can fix them. You don't know what you don't know. Pretty easy, right? So that's one part. This is actually not my door, but it's a more secure door. <laughs> so the key takeaway of this one is you only know what you know. The other reason why you should hack yourself um, to understand your website better is not only about knowing where the vulnerabilities is, but maybe where other stuff lies, how your website functions. It, may, it will make you a better coder, it will make you a better entrepreneur, and it will make your website better on its own. So ask yourself the following question. First of all, what is your main goal of your website? Right? Uh, for example, selling products, 
publishing information, collecting for a course, everything that you can do with WordPress, because basically with WordPress you can do everything. But ask yourself, what can I do with my website? What's the main goal? And how can people accomplish that? And you figured out, okay, I'm selling a product, I'm selling these lovely t-shirts, for example. People can go in, click on stores, select their size, put it in the cart, buy it, we ship it, perfect, everyone is happy, everyone has a nice shirt. So, uh, but how would you not want people to accomplish that? You want them to pay, right? So, uh, you don't want people not to pay for your shit, and you ship it out, and they get it for free. So, for example, if it's possible to manipulate your checkout process and entering a zero instead of a, I don't know, $12.99 for the shirt, and they still get it checked out and you ship it, that's a loss on your business. So, then go in and check what is the security mechanism behind it. For example, in your checkout card, if it's not possible to manipulate the amount that the people are paying for it, it's great. But maybe it's possible to circumvent that and basically go in and check out different ways to do that. Really play around with it so you can keep your shirt or get the money. Right? Um, and if you're trying and if you succeed with it, great. But if you basically succeed with it and can circumvent it, it's personally, in my opinion, even better. I know the slides say otherwise, but my personal opinion is that if you can circumvent your own security mechanisms, you have a way better understanding of your website, of your product, and how hackers think. And that's the main goal of the whole exercise. So the key takeaway here is think like a hacker to secure your business. So, and it's, this is my favorite part. Um, so who here is a coder? Show of hands. Okay, who here is a project manager? Oh, there we go. And who here is a C-level or runs a business or some, another higher level manager? Okay, perfect. These people, these three, four, five people that answered the last question, can you tell me one thing? Would you believe that security is the opposite of speed? Okay, I see, I see some people nodding, I see some people shaking their heads. Okay, let me ask around, what is the, opposite, or what is the purpose of brakes on a car, when you drive a car, right? You have brakes, you should have, or you have Flintstones car, but I don't care. So, even that has brakes. So, what is the purpose of a brake on a car? Just shout it out loud. To stop. To, stop. Yeah. to make the car go slower, right? Well, actually, no. So, it's the opposite. It's allowing you to go much faster. The reason is, if your car did not have brakes, you would need to be very, very careful while driving because you need to anticipate every single thing that happens in front of you, besides you, behind you. Be but if you have brakes, you have somehow have the ability to, on uh, unforeseen circumstances, you can brake, you can stop your car, you can exit the car, everything. Without brakes, that won't be possible. So, brakes don't slow down your journey, they make everything go faster. So, let's com take this comparison a little bit for brakes on the car and security and software development. Okay, brakes on the car, they help prevent accident. Great, security and software development does the same. It provides safety for everyone involved, of course, right? Horrible things can happen if any of these things fail, because if your brakes fail, eh, okay, if security and software development fails, your t-shirt goes out for free. Not a great thing. So, it can be operated by your feet, nah, not really for security and development, and it does not come as a factory default. Of course, we got frameworks, we got WordPress, perfect. There's a lot of security testing ongoing in WordPress, so we have a kind of secure environment, but each minor and major release has security fixes. 
Same goes for plugins, same goes for hosting, same goes for themes, everything. However, this stuff happens, especially in custom environments. So it's really, really important to understand that once a thing fails, it can break down your whole business, it can break down the, your whole operation, and it can really slow you down in a matter where your team cannot work because it's basically fixing everything. Or let's, let's take the example ransomware. If you don't have a proper backup system or your backup skipped uh, encrypted too, your business will be down for a time unless you pay or you find the description key. So you will lose money, you will lose time and effort, and also people will get really, really, really annoyed with other people because ransomware is a bitch to, uh, to fix. Okay, that's a lot of, lot of talk. Um, so the key takeaway, speed up but not slowing down your overall process. So all three, three key takeaways together would be you only know what you know, and only what is known can be fixed, of course. You should think like a hacker, be one step ahead and secure your business, and speed up by not slowing down your overall process. Okay, great. So, let's hack some stuff. Who's excited to hack some stuff? Come on, come on, people. Okay, don't get too excited. <laughs> the reason is, I don't know what's gonna happen. So I went outside and asked random people, hey, you have a WordPress website? Most of them said, of course, yes. I said, and they, oh, cool, do you want to get hacked? And they said, no. I said, okay, but. But then I found this guy, Ludwig. Ludwig is somewhere here. Yeah, hi, Ludwig. Um, he said, yeah, of course, yeah, try hack me. And I was like, okay, let's, well, let, that's going to be fun. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I did three things in preparation. I don't want to attack his live website, so I created a copy, put it on my own server, and created a subdomain, and everything was moved over. I did not touch a thing. I did the same server config. I did the same WordPress, same database, same version, same plugin version. Everything is the same. But look, we felt also very confident that we don't find anything. So I do this stuff a lot. I do this stuff daily. And I usually find things. So, Ludwig, you're very confident about security. Let's check out your website first. I already loaded some stuff that I uh, used to hack for websites because the reason is um, we don't have that much time. <laughs> so what you can see here is called Burp Suit. Burp Suit is basically something where you can see all the requests that's happening in an application or in a browser, and it collects all the information. And you can manipulate, you can repeat that information, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So I'm using this to first analyze the website. So prior to me doing that, there's one great tool out there that I will use in a second. It's called WP Scan. WP Scan was recently, I think about two years, acquired by Automatic. Uh, it's a great tool to basically scan your own website or other people's website, don't do that. Uh, scan your own website uh, for security issues and vulnerabilities and plugins, themes, and everything. So I will run that while we're doing our other reconnaissance on that. So just give me a second, need to open a terminal here. Also, I, I apologize for the clunky, this hacky development thing here, but my keyboard broke, so that was fun. So this is the URL we got from the, where I basically put in the website from Ludwig. Let's just check if it starts running. Oh, 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 it's going down, okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. It's, it's running. Um, during that time, we would just see what Ludwig's business is all about. Okay, banking. That's, uh, that's nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ludwig, you sure about this? Ludwig is gone. <laughs> Ludwig, this is your website, right? <laughs> 
let's just make sure. <laughs> because, okay, it is, it, oh, that, that's Ludwig. If you see him, pull him back in, please. So, um, it seems like basically they are provider for banking solutions. Okay. Okay, got it. So, but there is no actual banking going on here. Whoo! I, I'm really happy about that. Okay, we can see it's already multilingual. Okay, it's using. I think I know what plugin they are using. <laughs> Let's check further. I'm just clicking around all this website to get an information or basically get a feeling what are they all about and what they do and what's important for the business, right? Uh huh. Okay. They are also they are also issuing credit cards. Great. And this will be our okay contact. Contact forms are always fun. Oh yeah, perfect. You got a contact form. Okay, but other than that, it's pretty static from what I can see. Okay, um, it would be a bummer, but that might be boring. But <laughs> let's check out what w, uh, WP Scan put out. So as you can see, we run the scan, and it also gives us some yeah, interesting stuff. So we know it runs on Nginx. Uh, da, da. Robots TXT, there's nothing in there. XML RPC is enabled, which is great for me um, because with XML RPC you can do stuff easier uh, when there's another vulnerability. So <coughs> the site has must use plugins, great. Uh, external WP cron, yeah. Oh, it's the newest WordPress version, good for you. It's not the newest theme version. That's good. So um, I would just check if there are any vulnerabilities known with this version, basically. Contact form 7. Wow, this is an old one. It's 5.1.1. So, and there's a lot. There's a lot of going on on contact form. Okay, what we got here? WordPress SEO. So we got Yoast. Any Yoast people here? Okay, we'll shut up. Um, Yoast is pretty secure, actually, so that's good. There are no config backups. Okay, good. So we found some out-of-date plugins and themes. So what I can do with this information is basically I can check and roam around the internet and try basically to find out if it's possible that there are any vulnerabilities on that. But um, prior to that, let me just take a step back for a second and explain what we just did. So I run a WP scan, scanner, which gives me some information that I can later use. In addition, I let Burp Suit basically monitor every connection that I have, that I made, and with the get and with the response. So if I find something interesting, I can try to manipulate that and just see, hey, is it possible to create something that should not happen on this side, right? So, um, but that's of course a lot because we clicked a lot around, but we can later on filter. But right now what we did is reconnaissance and I need to do a little bit more reconnaissance. So what I want to know from Ludwig's website is if he has secured his WP admin panel. Yeah, he did. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty neat. Um, so this is good because on a, most script kiddies, script kiddies are people that just run scripts instead of doing real hacking. So they download stuff they find on the internet and run it. And of course, a lot of these script kiddies will basically, can, they can crash your site because they will fire thousands of requests per second, basically a DDoS or DOS attack. Um, and they will do it on the WP admin with basically credential stuffing infos. So what that means is they will try to find a way into your WordPress backend because if they get a way into the WordPress backend because you use admin as a user and password as a password, they don't need to do any hacking, right? So um, on that point, 
there is something else, because what most people forget, even with securing the WP admin, is that you need two things, at least two things, to get access to the WP admin, right? First of all, you need the username. Second of all, you need the password. The password might be hard to guess, but what about the username? So there's an API endpoint in WordPress, in WPJSON, basically. Excuse me? You got redirected to the live site. Oh, yeah, that is, thank you. <laughs> this is good info. Why did I, what did I, ah. Yeah, if that happens, hmm, that would not be fun, at least not for Ludwig. <laughs> this is an endpoint, uh, wp.json slash wp slash version 2, so v2 slash users, which is most of the time not secured, and yep, bingo, we can find basically the name, and this very nice name, or the login, depends on, or we can just use the name, it's also fine, um, of the admin or of other people that used to log in, or everyone that is basically registered on this site. Yeah, and also we found me, because Ludwig created an account for me. So when I got this information as a script kid or as an attacker, I have 50% of what I need right, to do basically an attack on WordPress, because I already got the name, now I only have to guess the password, which might be a little bit hard, granted, but 50% complete, so to speak. Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, WP Scan has finished, we found some stuff, I will come back to that in a second. However, I created something, I created some tools, uh, to make everything much more easy for me, right? Um, we don't need the WP user finder because <laughs> I can basically uh, just use this route, but the WP user finder uses additional methods because, for example, um, even if you lock this one down here, you still might have comments or you still might have blog posts that have names in there from which I can then go ahead and try to guess or try to get the admin panel user, right? So we don't need that. Uh, WP Config Finder, this is, this is also a great one. Um, okay, I'm, I'm bragging because I wrote this one. But <laughs> uh, the thing is, people, if they create a backup of the, their site or they want to change stuff and they read somewhere, hey, you need to put this in a WP Config, what do they always do because everyone tells them they create a backup, right? And most of the times, this is wpconfig.php.backup. Uh, but not always. So what I did, um, I created this small tool which basically just checks for a lot of stuff um, and endpoints that, uh, let me check that basically checks all kind of endpoints um, of WP config, right? So it goes in, don't mind the double slash, it doesn't matter, uh, and checks if these PHP files are actually there. Because since the PHP files are usually not named PHP in the end, they get rendered. So, and that's bad, because if your uh, <laughs> WP config is exposed, doesn't matter how secure WordPress is otherwise. If I get access to the database, if I get access to, to uh, the salts, it doesn't matter. Okay, while this runs, um, I also have another tool. So, I've been doing this for a long time, so I, I kind of know where the usual suspects are, right? However, that should never ever stop any one of you who tries to go into business in doing these kind of things. This is, of course, a demonstration, uh, and I'm pressed for time, so I'm doing everything very, very fast. So if you want to talk about this further, I'm always happy to chat by water, beer, whatever, be here all weekend, so uh, let me know. 
But that being said, first of all, we did not find any WP config backups. This is good. Thank you, Ludwig. You're kind of secure. He did not come back. Okay. So, um, and let's check about my <laughs> vulnerable config finder. So basically what this does, um, it has a lot of, lot of domains and a lot of, lot of endpoints, uh, which it basically goes through and tries to exploit stuff. Um, and always uncached, right? So uh, that's why I always add a nonce there. Th this is basically it. It does not do anything else. But um, the reason why I need to, needed to do this is, uh, is basically because I didn't want to do it all by myself by hand. <laughs> so here we go. Now it runs. So it just runs wave four. Okay, so this is interesting because um, WP scan, of course, I'm using the free version to show you how it is and not using the paid version um, of WP scan, so it might not get the results that, that, uh, that I expected. However, okay, contact form seven. Oh, unrestricted file upload, oh. Yeah, that's bad. Um, however, in my info, uh, because I get this one a lot, is I need to check if on that page actually is uh, the contact form actually basically has some, some file upload. Um, I can see it does not, so we can't exploit that. However, Ludwig, you need, really need to update your plugin. So let's just check what this vulnerability is all about. So I put, always put my sources in here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, as I remember, when there are, for example, many sites that use an upload form with contact form 7 had the possibility to not only uh, upload one file, but multiple files. And you could, it, it, filtered, it filtered out basically some file names that they didn't want because, for example, they don't want to execute PHP, right? So it put a filter in there. Makes sense. However, you can circumvent that, as far as I remember. I am remembering right. This is good. Um, if you use special characters and use Unicode characters, it still got executed. And then you could do upload a file, which basically gave you a web shell or anything that you wanted, and basically go in and do whatever you wanted on that site. So, Ludwig, you're kind of vulnerable to that, um, but not really because you don't have an upload form, but it's still pretty, pretty bad. Okay, the other one, what's with that? Backup Buddy. Okay, Backup Buddy is great. Um, the tool's actually really good. And usually you don't find these things unless you really know where to look. Because Backup Buddy only works on the back end of WordPress. So you can't really just go in on the front end and see, hey, uh, is there anything that Backup Buddy might, might not do? So, however, this one is multiple reflected cross-site scripting stuff. Okay, let's check this out. So which version was it? 881. Okay, this plugin does not sanitize and escapes some parameters before outputting them back in various places. That's the usual stuff that happens with <laughs> cross-site scripting. So to everyone who's not that familiar, what is cross-site scripting? Cross-site scripting basically means that um, as an attacker, I can create a URL with your domain but with some strings in the URL format, if you click it, for example, JavaScript get executed, which is fucking great for an attacker because I can send you stuff like, hey, uh, click this link and I got your WordPress session. I can get it back because the JavaScript sends it to my control server, for example, or click this link and you, can, you will download something and execute it. So that is basically cross-site scripting. So, what we can see here, that there are multiple thin, no, there are not multiple ways to do that, but there are multiple versions of it. Okay, since we got 8.81, okay, but it's 
on the admin side, which is also great because, um, I mean, it's not that great that we can't really exploit it from an attacker perspective without being um, authenticated, but we can still try to uh, authenticate ourselves, right? So let me just go in here. Uh, da -da. So Ludwig created an account for me, the good one. So let me just log in here. Funny enough, now, of course, I did not get off, uh, got the um, off password because I seem not to have copied it correctly. OK, that's great. Let me just check my username and password that Ludwig created for me. Oh, dear. That might take a while. In the meantime, feel free to roam around. OK, hopefully this works. Bingo, we are in. OK, cool. So um, also, hey, man, there are six updates, Ludwig. You told me you were secure. Let's check out the updates just while we're here. In the meantime, let me just check out what this was. Since we are above 8.81, we can create, we could use this. OK. Got it. So um, as we can see in this example here that WP Scan actually provided, um, basically, this is all we need. We need this string to execute the ladder. So let me just show you how this would look like. So um, as you can see, here is a character, um, which is basically a double quote, which makes sure that basically the URL ends here, right? And the script part begins here. So everything I put afterwards gets executed. Hopefully, because we're not, then I look like an idiot. OK, let's try. We should see a pop-up. We got it. Perfect. So what does this mean? Right now, it just says XXX, which is fine. But I can put in whatever I want here, want here right? Oh. So everything that I put in here should, be, should get executed. It does not. OK, because it's still needs to be escaped here. Bingo. This is good. This is good stuff. So, but what's the harm in that, right? It's just, just a pop-up. However, this pop-up is only for demonstrational stuff. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you what it could get as an attacker. It will, of course, use in a, in a backup. As you can see here, we got the document cookie. If I take this, and this is the browser cookie that I, as Matt Tester, I'm logged in right now. This is my cookie for WordPress. If I take this cookie and send it over with a script to my server, I receive it locally, and then I, OK, as the attacker, can log into WordPress. That's the problem with cross-site scripting. Anyone get me so far? It's totally fine if you don't get it. Raise your hand if I should explain more. I'm totally confident. Yeah, well, good. OK, perfect. Thanks. OK, um, but this, should, this is just one example of cross-site scripting. Yes, there's, I, I have some, some other stuff that makes it maybe a little bit more clear. Uh, for example, I got this one, right? So <laughs> this renders a whole new, uh, granted pretty ugly, right? Uh, a whole new login form. So um, I can use this one for phishing easily. I can put all the HTML I want in that. I can even include additional scripts. I can include a Stripe script. I can include a pay post script. I can include everything, a whole website. And I could even include the WordPress login. So the WP admin, I can render it again, put it in the middle, make it beautiful in CSS, center in CSS, however that goes. 
and people will log in because they think, oh, I got logged out again, my session is done. And they will input everything, and as an attacker, I will have username and password as well. So Ludwig, wherever you may roam uh, right now, you should secure that. Let's see if we have everything else here. How are we on time currently? I'm good? Ah, perfect, nice, okay. So, we got backup buddy, we got pla Okay, this is great. So, let's check what Burp Suite has to say for us. Like I said, it captures every request I make in that, in that browser, right? Um, and there is a lot of stuff. For example, if we go to, yeah, I'm just gonna filter by script, flash. <laughs> um, got jQuery, got the DV scripts min. Okay, that's fine as well. But we could also see in the request attributes if there's anything um, that we can alter that might give us some more yeah, access, right? This is all get. There is, of course, no post because we did not post something to the site. This was after I logged in. No, this was, this was, yeah, this was after I logged in. But this is, this is a great example as well. Um, so basically, we have the value here from the cookie, right? This is the value that we also got from um, when we attack this one here, right? However, I can't do anything with that right now. But just to give you an example of what I could do if this was a more vulnerable state of the WordPress website. This cookie I could easily alter by sending it to the repeater and I have everything in here what I want, right? Um, including the request cookies. Sometimes I need to go in and alter this cookie. I can input anything I want here, right? So, and if I do that and I still being logged in or I still get a valid response, I know that I can do cookie manipulation and use that maybe to escalate my privileges. For example, Currently, I'm logged in as Matt Tester. Maybe Matt Tester wouldn't be an admin. Maybe the only admin would be admin or Ludwig. But I would be a contributor, right? I can then go in and check if that cookie has attributes in it which defines the role that I'm in, right? For example, contributor. Change that to admin. If that works, bingo! So, luckily, WordPress is very secure that way. Other plugins? for WordPress that um, uses these kind of things might be not, but in this case, in this case, we're golden, so. Um, okay, that's good. Let me just check something else here on the site. Where is it? So we got that, we got the login, we had the contact form. The WordPress was up to date, if I recall, right? Let's just this was 6.1.1. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay, um, so overall, Ludwig, I know you're not here anymore right now, but overall, I would say, yeah, your website is okay ish secure. So I would need to do either one thing, convince you to put a, an upload form on your contact form, and that's not going to happen, or I can send you a phishing link. Right, a phishing link that I prepare to use the cross-site scripting method and do whatever I want. For example, I'll put in the WP login form, or I will input a cookie session stealer or any kinds of things. I could even input a key logger because JavaScript will log every keystroke if I tell them to. So, and doing that, it might be a good idea for you to upgrade your plugins. So, okay, before we move on to the next uh, target, I don't think we have actually time for the next target, but I have something else for you. So, um, I've worked prior to my job, I've worked at the managed WordPress hoster. I'm still head of security there. Um, we did around with about 
40, 50,000 WordPress website a year. So what do you think is the most common way a WordPress website gets hacked? Just shout it out loud. Outdated plugins. Okay, we got outdated plugins. Anyone or themes? Okay, anything else? Brute force. Brute force. What do you mean by that? Password brute forcing. Password brute forcing. Okay, what else we got? Excuse me. Comma username, same as brute force, but yeah. What was here? Come on, pass. Say. <laughs> Excuse me. What? Exact, for example, yeah, premium on themes are plugins that were downloaded, not legally, but from some site, so you get it for free. There's a raise of hand over there. Outdated PHP. Outdated PHP. Okay, yeah. Poor configuration of the server, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. You <laughs> see? <laughs> Crab web host, yeah. <laughs> okay, and over there? Uh, can you repeat that, sorry? Unmaintained platforms. Unmaintained platforms, okay, yeah, perfect. So all of them are great, and all of them are true. What do you think is the most common one? Simple passwords is right, simple admin password is right, because I have seen people using so many security passwords, configuring everything right, wrong, and uh, uh, right, sorry, <laughs> configure everything right, doing a lot of stuff on their front end, and then use admin password one, two, three. I kid you not, I kid you not. So at one time, we at my own company, I went in and I created a script basically that went through everything, compared the hashes to most common passwords, and then emailed that user, hey, please change your standard password for everything. Luckily, WordPress already has some uh, great stuff to prevent that, but yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, great. Uh, that was basically a small demonstration. We didn't get thus far, but we had a little, little fun with it. I hope you enjoyed it. I know hacking is not all that glamorous as movies is trying to, to tell us to with box blocks building out together, yeah. but yeah. I still, still find it fun. Uh, love it, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them now. And also, if you want to chat a little bit more, I'm roaming all around here. Uh, I'm the only one here, so I don't have any friends here, so make, let me make new ones. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, y'all. Milan.